Um, hello, my name is Hugh Strafford. I'm a research officer at Swansea University and today I'm going to be discussing our findings regarding idiopathic intracranial hypertension in Wales. Um, in this study, we retrospectively analysed anonymised routinely collected Welsh healthcare data held within the sale data bank at Swansea University, covering almost the complete Welsh population and 35 million years of patient data. Idiopathic intracranial hypertension, from now on referred to as IIH, is a condition of unknown etiology that causes increased spine, spinal fluid pressure and is strongly associated with obesity. Um, IIH predominantly affects women of childbearing age and can cause chronic headaches, visual disturbances, and in the minority of patients, permanent visual loss. A considerable factor in our lack of understanding is due to the lack of recent epidemiological studies into IIH. Currently, the best treatment for IIH is weight loss. If vision is threatened, then brain surgery might be considered. The surgery mainly consists of a placement of a tube from the head to the abdomen, known as a ventriculoperioneal shunt. Um, the operation does have some risks, of course, uh, with complications after surgery, such as blockages of the shunt. Um, to validate the accuracy of our IH diagnostic codes, we identified 153 individuals um, from Morrison Hospital in Swansea who were diagnosed with IH in 2017. Using GP read code version 2 and hospital ICD-10 diagnostic codes, we achieved a sensitivity of 92%. We then looked at 141 hospital records um, where IH had been coded using IC-10 codes. 87% had a consultant diagnosis of IH and therefore we achieved a specificity of 87%. Using this algorithm, um, we gathered uh, uh, 2,275 individuals who were diagnosed with IH between the 1st of January 2003 and the 31st of December 2017. After excluding individuals with secondary intracranial hypertension, which can be caused by, by example, uh, for example, by trauma, brain tumours and drugs, um, and those individuals with insufficient data, we were left with 1,765 individuals. Um, we then gathered the control cohort of 5,295 individuals, matching on sex, age, in which we used week of birth, and deprivation, which we used well, the Welsh Index for Multiple Deprivation, deprivation Quintile at time of diagnosis. Um, to begin with, we looked at instance and prevalence. Um, here you can clearly see an increase in incidence um, and prevalence in the general population, with incidence increasing from 2.3 per 100,000 per year in 2003 to 8.7 per 100,000 per year in 2017. Um, the increase in, pre uh, in prevalence uh, was 12 per 100,000 in 2003 and, and 76 per 100,000 in 2017. Um, from that, we then to look at factors to account for this increase, starting with obesity. Um, 1,522, around 86% of our cohort, had a BP body mass index recording, or BMI, um, at or after diagnosis. 74% um, uh, of women had a BMI of over 30 um, and therefore would be classed as obese, with another 16.3% had BMIs between 25 and 30 and would be classed as overweight. Um, when you compare this to men uh, with 46% uh, um, and 36.1%, and um, there's a clear shift to lower BMIs for men compared to women. Um, the mean instance for women, uh, for obese women, is a 23.5% per 100,000 per year, and the prevalence is 180 per 100,000. The corresponding figures for women with an ideal BMI, which is a BMI between 20 and 25, is 1.6 per 100,000 per year, and um, and a prevalence of 13.2 uh, per 100,000. Um, as you can see, these values are far lower for obese men, and um, were uh, slightly lower uh, for ideal weight men. After looking at depth, uh, incident uh, uh, um, obesity, we went to look at deprivation. Um, we recorded deprivation using two most deprived quintiles in the Welsh Index for multiple deprivation, uh, creating a set of claw press representing the distribution of IH incidence, IH prevalence, and social depri deprivation across Wales, split by Welsh health boards. 
um, it appears that incidents, prevalence and deprivation are all mostly clustered together, suggesting a link and in South Wales with Cum Taf Health Board being the most affected. There's also a clear increase in prevalence when moving from the least deprived quintile to the most deprived, as you can see from uh, on the right hand side. Um, we then use lo a logistic regression model to generate odds ratios for de developing IH based on sex, BMI and deprivation. This suggested that even when adjusting for BMI, there's still an association between IH and deprivation in women, but not in men. And um, we found that women were one and a half times more likely um, to develop IH in the more deprived areas compared to the least deprived, even after adjusting, um, after adjusting for BMI. In women, it therefore seems likely that factors that are associated with deprivation, apart from obesity alone, also contribute to the etiology of IH. We found that for men, although our numbers were, were uh, smaller, IH is associated with BMI only and not deprivation. There was a weaker association of BMI with IH um, and a smaller increase in, in IH incidence in time with men when compared to with women um, also backs this up. Um, men are four times less likely to develop IH than women after adjusting for BMI and deprivation. Um, this adds to the evidence that, that IH in men has different characteristics to IH in women providing further evidence that they have provided further evidence to the hypothesis that something hormonal is occurring. Um, we then went to look at healthcare utilization. We demonstrated that people with IH have an increased rate of unscheduled healthcare hospital utilization compared with the match control cohort. Um, the rate ratio for uh, unscheduled hospital admissions in the IIH con con cohort compared to the control was 5.28. Um, a considerable portion of the success in, in an, an unscheduled hospital admission occurred at time of diagnosis and can be explained by an urgent need for investigation of papilledema, which is a swelling of the optic disc due to high intracranial pressure that requires brain, brain imaging and spinal fluid analysis. Um, however, there's also a considerable excess in unscheduled hospital admissions before and after diagnosis. Um, the increase um, prior to diagnosis uh, suggest that there's an opportunity for um, earlier diagnosis and early intervention and the increase and the increased post diagnosis is probably due to hospital attendance for severe headaches. Um, 158, about 8% of our people in, uh, with IH in Wales received cerebral spinal fluid uh, diversion procedures or shunts um, at a mean of um, 1.33 years after diagnosis. Um, individuals with IH who have undergone um, these stunt procedures um, also have a significantly increased unscheduled healthcare admission rate compared with individuals with IH who have not gone um, a shunt, who, have, who don't have a shunt at a rate ratio of 2.02. The increased rate of unscheduled healthcare admission for those who, who um, compared to those who didn't have a shunt, is possibly explained at diagnosis due to more severe instances of higher age. However, there's still a huge increase after diagnosis uh, and, after, and, and after the meantime for having a shunt procedure, even when comparing to a no, the no shunt, um, uh, these possible shunt, uh, the, the possible shunt, post shunt visits are due to suspected problems uh, due with the shunt, which can be blockages or infections. Um, these symptoms um, are usually um, headaches, um, so it can be difficult to tell if the problem is due to IH or due to the shunt itself. Um, so finally, to summarise everything up, we have a clear um, increase in incidence and prevalence in association with deprivation and obesity. Um, differences between men and women, most interestingly, no association to deprivation when adjusting for BMI. Um, and in and then finally, an increased healthcare utilization for individuals with IH and then a further increase for individuals who then go on to have a shunt. Um, I'd like to thank you all for your time today. Um, yeah, and I uh, hope you all have a nice day. Thanks.